Johnny Martin lived in New Orleans. He worked for the Customs Service. He came right to the point. A ruby was smuggled out of Hong Kong by a man called Harry Chung. When Chung arrived in Honolulu, the ruby had vanished. Two days ago, a man called Crioni was found dead in the back of his little grocery store in New Orleans. The police thought it was food poisoning because of an empty can on the table. It had contained a lower fine Hawaiian foods. The autopsy revealed no food poison. I asked where Crioni had obtained the Aloha foods. The Golden Import Company, they have an exclusive deal for all of the Aloha product. We took a sample can out of every crate in the warehouse. We found nothing. Behind some books in Crioni's apartment, the police found $50,000 worth of opium and Harry Chung's ruby. Hmm. So anyhow, when you're in Honolulu, I wish you'd think about it. I have an idea that's where the answer is. You're just crazy enough to find it. Yeah. I'm just crazy enough to look for it. <laughs> in Honolulu. I wasn't happy. I had thought about Johnny Martin's problem and about Aloha Foods. I couldn't forget a ruby that had been smuggled into the United States. There's one thing about it. If you've led my kind of life, you're never entirely a stranger anywhere. I found an old friend in a very odd corner indeed, a side street off the main drag. His name was Wong. He was having a cup of tea in the back of his shop. It's been a long time, Mike. Uh, some tea? Thanks. Now, what is it you would like to have me do this time? Do you happen to know a man named Harry Chung? Why? If somebody told me if I wanted to pick up some good stones at a fair price, he might help me. Harry Chung? I believe that was his name. Yes, I've heard of him. Where can I find him? It's hard to say. Look, this is important to me. It's much easier to send word that you want him. Oh, he'll find me, huh? Much easier for Chung to find you, Mike. Yeah. I was sure Wong would deliver my message. In time, Harry Chung would find me. Next, I learned about a gambling house. The fanciest, most exclusive layout in the islands. A mink and velvet sucker trap called the Coral Seas. It opened after 10 p.m. A friend told me I would find the owner of the Aloha Fine Hawaiian Foods gambling. His name was Raymond Varney. That night about 11 o'clock I found Mr. Varney without any trouble. I hadn't been looking for his wife, but I found her too. You're lucky tonight. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to like it here. I'm Michael Lanyard. I'm Susan Varney. This is my husband, Raymond. Oh. You gamble very well, Mr. Lanyard. In a way, gambling is part of my business. I think he's nice, Raymond. Won't you ask Mr. Lanyard to join us? Uh, will you join us, Mr. Lanyard? Yes, I'd like to. The man in the checkered dinner jacket seemed very interested in listening to our conversation. I wondered why. I wondered who he was. I found out nothing I hadn't known already. Varney was the owner and operator of Aloha Fine Hawaiian Foods. It was a small canning company. Well, if you're interested, I'd be happy to show you through the plant tomorrow. Or any time. As a matter of fact, I'll take you up on that. I've always... I've been looking for you. Let's dance. Well, pull up a chair, Phil. Sit down. Later. Come on, Susan. I've, uh, I've known Phil a long time. Phil? Uh, Phil Ravina. People often don't understand him. Well, that's odd. I would say he was easy to understand. What does he do? Well, uh, he used to own some kind of experimental laboratory. He doesn't seem like a scientist. Oh, you back so soon? Your name, Lanyard? Yes. 
have a cigar. No, thank you. What's the matter with it? Nothing. What do you do, Lanyard? Do you care? I don't. Just visiting the islands? Just visiting. Going to be here long? That depends. Depends on what? On what trouble I get into. If you're looking for trouble, you can usually find it, you know. I don't look for trouble. It always seems to find me. I tell you one thing. I can usually spot it coming from a long way off. Excuse me. Thanks. It was about 3 a.m. when I got back to my hotel. I was ready to call it a night. I made a mental note to check on Phil Ravina and to check the connections between him and the Varneys. But it would have to wait until tomorrow because I was ready for the sack. I was dead tired. Before he opened his mouth, I knew that Harry Chung had found me. So sorry to disturb you. I'm Harry Chung. was. Pretty late, isn't it? It's always pretty late. Would you like a drink? No. So? So? I suppose Jack Wong told you I wanted to see you. If I'd been so happy as to know Jack Wong, he might have mentioned your name. But you don't know him, huh? No. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. Do you happen to know a man named Raymond Varney? Only the name. I think he uh, exports Hawaiian delicacies. Do you know a man named Phil Ravina? Ravina? No. Uh, this name is not in my memory. Is there a reason why you ask? No, it's not important. Just some people I met tonight. Oh, yes. Mr. Chung, let me ask you a hypothetical question. Hypothetical question? Oh, yes. <laughs> If this, and if this, what if? <laughs> Ask. Suppose you had a fortune in jewels or gold or something else, say in Macau or Hong Kong, and you wanted to bring it to Honolulu or Hilo, what would you do? I would declare the objects and pay the duty. <sighs> Suppose you didn't want to do that. This raises a rather rep peculiar problem. Do you have a map of the islands? Yes, I think so. Yeah. You know, in Honolulu, it is possible for a stranger to think that the old ways and customs are gone. <laughs> this is wrong. Here, and here, and here, and here, and here. There's no harbor for big ship, no tourist, or very few. The natives live same as for a thousand years. I understand. Around these islands, coral reefs, very dangerous even to small ship. But the natives manage very well with uh, outrigger canoe. No sail, no light, no motor. <laughs> At night, impossible to see. I'm following you. Go ahead. Now here come the big freighters from Hong Kong, Macau, 
Shanghai, India, everywhere. So. So in the middle of the night, something is dropped from the deck of a ship. Perhaps it's attached to a marker or a boy. Eventually, this something finds its way to Honolulu. Quite simple. Of course, this scheme would only work if you knew the natives and had been raised with them as I was. Of course, uh, this is only if this and if that. What was the word? Hypothetical. <laughs> of course. You ask a hypothetical question, you get a hypothetical answer. I'm sorry, Mr. Lanyard, but I... I What's wrong? I, Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Mr. Chung was just leaving. Good night, all. Good night. Now, tell me about it. I, I, I had to come because... because... She was breathing naturally. She would come too in another few minutes. I wasn't sure why Susan Varney had decided to visit me, but no doubt she'd have a very good reason. I want to speak to a Mr. Raymond Varney. Oh, it's V-A-R-N-E-Y. Uh, no, I don't know the address. Call me when you get him. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Feel better? Can I get you something? No, nothing. I'm quite all right, really. Good. Do you mind if I ask a few questions? No. And why the phony fainting spell? It's the only thing I could think of at the moment. I don't get it. We're seeing that man here. Mr. Chung, you mean? I'd seen him before by accident with Phil Ravino. What of it? You see, when I... Came here, I was running away from Phil. Uh -huh. Yeah. One moment, please. Hello, hello. I'm sorry, sir, your number does not answer. Shall I keep trying? Huh? No. Cancel the call. I thought a little breath of fresh air might do me good. Uh -huh. What was this about Ravina? Frightens me. I think he's dangerous. Have you uh, told your husband? I tried to tell him, but he thinks it's all a joke. Right after you left, Phil told my husband that you'd been asking a lot of questions. Did he say what questions? No. He and Raymond went to the bar together. I didn't hear the rest. Raymond left immediately, was upset. When Phil came back to the table, I asked him what it was all about. I asked him about you. He threatened to kill me if I didn't mind my own business. What do you want me to do? Tell me if my husband's in trouble. Tell me what you know about Phil. I can't tell you anything about him. I only met Ravina, your husband, and you a few hours ago. Got to get away, I'm afraid. You must help me, you must. No one could help Susan Varney anymore. She was dead. Ravina wasn't home. I searched his apartment carefully. I found two things. Some happy letters from Susan and a flashlight. Not exactly a common flashlight. I'd seen one like it while I was in the army. Now I knew how merchandise was smuggled from Honolulu into the United States. Then 
I heard Ravina. I was anxious to see him. That's settled. Let's talk, huh? What do you want? Susan told me you thought I was asking too many questions. That's a lie. Besides, she's dead. Is that why you killed her? You're a crazy lanyard. I didn't kill her. The police say you did. Well, that's only for a little while longer. I don't know what you're talking about. If you didn't kill her, Tell me who did. I'd like to know. So would the police. But I suggest you don't call them. You see, I know about you and Chung. Nice to see you again, Mr. Ravina. The next person on my list was Raymond Varney. His address was easy to find. And Varney, in spite of what he'd been through, was easy to talk to. So all the time I was trying to reach you by telephone, you were out looking for your wife, huh? <laughs> the police have asked that question a hundred times. I could ask you another question. Did you find her? Mr. Lanyard, I loved my wife. Why would I kill her? Why would Phil Ravina want to kill her? Phil? Oh, wait. Susan was afraid of Phil. She told me so many times, but I, I never paid any attention to her. How long have you known Ravina? About eight years, when I first arrived. He's always been a very good friend. In fact, he's my silent partner. How's that? Well, well I wanted to expand my business. That was about two years ago. But I didn't have the cash. Phil gave it to me, so I gave him an interest. Is he a lot of money? I don't really know. He always seemed to have enough. He invested much more in a photographic process he was hoping you could license for stage effects and advertising displays. And he suddenly lost interest in it. When I needed help, he gave it. Since then, he's been reasonably active in my business. Uh -huh. Have you ever heard of a man called Chung? Once. Some time ago. Why? Phil spoke of him. Something about perhaps doing some business together. Anything else? No. Mr. Langer, tell me. Do you believe Phil Ravenna killed Susan? What do you think? Well, for me, that's a very difficult question. Susan and I were very happy. Though there was an age difference, it didn't matter. Our tastes were alike. But I can't somehow forget her fears about Phil. Uh -huh. But if you give me a little time, maybe I can get you all the answers. By rights, I should telephone the police and tell them you're here. But I, I do want to know who killed Susan. Thanks. I telephoned Johnny Martin and told him to come fast. He was due in on the 10 o'clock plane. And it was on time. He was going to be surprised at how simple it was to smuggle any small item into any country. And I was going to find Susan Varney's murderer. Hello, Johnny. Michael. Welcome to the island. Thank you. Got it all wrapped up, huh? I hope you're right. You got the empty can? It's in the bag. Good, wait a minute. I have to make a couple of phone calls. Set the stage. First, I call Raymond Varney. I told him to meet me at his warehouse in about half an hour. He didn't say much. He just agreed to be there. Next, I telephoned Phil Ravina. I told him the same thing, but I added I wanted him to bring Harry Chung. I told him to meet me at the warehouse and to be there in half an hour. He said he'd show, and with Chung. Right. Better be good. I think it will be. At least it'll be interesting. <laughs> Let's go. 
Gentlemen, this is Johnny Martin of U.S. Customs. Mr. Martin has wondered how a certain ruby was smuggled into the United States. Mr. Chong explained to me how it might reach Honolulu. Let me show you how it went from there. This is not a flashlight. It, however, makes a light, the one that you can't see. The black quartz lens cuts all visible light rays and transmits only ultraviolet. It works only in the dark. Let me show you. Suppose this is a warehouse in the United States. A man knows that one can, in a certain marked case, contains a fortune. How is he able to find it? Give me the empty can, Johnny. Any agent receiving a shipment containing smuggled merchandise had a very simple way of knowing which can contained the fortune. Mr. Varney never knew because the rest of his Hawaiian foods were simply distributed. I must say, Ravina, you figured out a very ingenious plan. Never told me you... Did Susan know? Is that why she was always with you? Or is that why you killed her? Shut up, you fool! Mr. Varney killed her. <laughs> I saw him. You think I didn't know about you two? I've hated her falling in love with you. Yes, I killed her! Drop that gun, Ravina. Lights, Johnny! You all right, Mike? Yeah. Say, Mike, did you have this all figured out, or was it just a happy accident? It was easy, once I found the flashlight. Ravina and Chung were enjoying a fine little business. It might have gone on for years if it hadn't been for Varney's wife. Yeah, I guess so. Cost the country a lot less if Ravina had been a better shot. Yeah. I don't know about you, Johnny, but I've learned one thing. The next time I set a stage, there's going to be better light. <laughs> oh, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> 